Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back, your lovely, lovely faces, to a brand new video here on the channel. And it's good to be back. It's good to be back making videos again. And just to have, just to have just a bit of a conversation with people, if that makes any sense. You've seen the thumbnail, you've seen the title, and it's interesting to see that Pirates of the Caribbean producer, which is Jerry Bruckheimer, he has said, we're gonna reboot the franchise, which is easier to put together because you don't have to wait for certain actors. Now, with this, off the top, everyone knows, even the actual studios know, if Johnny Depp is not in this film, it's going to bomb. It's going to bomb huge. But this is what we got. So it is coming from Variety, but uh, Jay Bruckheimer did an interview with comicbook.com. Producer Jerry Bruckheimer said in a recent interview with comicbook.com that the current plan is to reboot the beloved Disney Adventure franchise, which has grossed $4.5 billion across five movies. Now, with that there, that's not because of everyone else, not really. Everyone knows Pirates is Johnny Depp. Bruckheimer was fielding a question about the future of his hit franchises, which also includes the Tom Cruise starring Top Gun series. It's hard to tell. You don't know, you, re you really don't know. You don't know how they come together. You just don't know. Because with Top Gun, you have an actor who is iconic and brilliant. And how many movies he does before he does Top Gun, I can't tell you. But we're going to reboot Pirates. So that is easier to put together because you don't have to wait for certain actors. His comments make it seem as if the next Pirates movie will feature an entirely new cast, meaning Johnny Depp would not return as Captain Jack Sparrow. He has headlined all five pirate movies so far. Variety reported in summer 2020 that Disney was an early development on two pirates movies, a reboot led by Margaret Robbie and a sixth film in the original franchise written by Craig Mazin and Ted Elliott. Mazin told the LA Times last year, the script for Pirate 6 is so weird he is surprised Disney signed off on it. We pitched it and thought there's no way they're buying it. It's too weird. And they did. And then we wrote a fantastic script and the strike happened and everyone's waiting around. Now it does go into by here regarding Margaret Robbie because Margaret Robbie says right about this. She said it herself that it was dropped. And you know, she's added, we had an idea and we were developing it for a while ages ago to have a more female led, not totally female led, but just a different kind of story, which we thought would have been really cool. But I guess they don't want to do it. So with that one by there, and remember now, this is not even two years ago. It's not. It's just over a year ago that Margaret Robbie said they don't want to do it. We're getting rid of it now. They just don't want it. But now they're coming forward. And you know, like by here, Bruckheimer then clarified that the script for Margaret Robbie's one will come forward at a certain point. He said the project wasn't completely dead, but that Disney was prioritizing Mason and Elliot's script instead. To be honest with you, out of the three writers that they have mentioned, Craig Mason, Ted Elliot, and then you got Christina Hodgson, who was doing the uh, Margaret Robbie one, to be honest with you, the Craig Mason script is going to explode and everyone's like, I want to do that script, not that script. Because when you got Craig Mazin and you got Ted Elliott, just the resume of these two writers alone outshines Christina Hodgson. Don't get me wrong, Christina Hodgson, she's actually done a few really good movies. You know, she wrote um, Bumblebee, which I absolutely love, that Transformers movie. She then, you know, she's done Birds of Prey, which, you know, but then she also wrote The Flash. Then you've got Ted Elliott and Craig Mazin. Craig Mazin is coming off the huge success of Chernobyl. And Ted Elliott, well, let's have a look at Ted Elliott, shall we? Because Ted Elliott is just, to me, one of the best writers around. The amount of scripts that Ted Elliott has done, oof. Like I say, obviously he's in all the pirate films. But we'll go to Wikipedia. So, he wrote, he wrote the 92 cartoon, Aladdin. Then you had The Mask of Zorro, Small Soldiers, amazing. He wrote Shrek, Pirates of the Caribbean, obviously you had them ones there. 
But I'm pretty sure as well, yeah, the Lone Ranger. Then he did uh, a few others, like by here, where he was the creative consultant for Shrek 2 and so many amazing films. But then, when you look at Craig Mazin, like I said, he's coming off of uh, Chernobyl. This guy is just like, yeah. But what cracks me up with, with uh, Craig Mazin, his first couple of films was Rocket Man, which was uh, not bad, not bad. But he did Scary Movie 3 for Superhero Movie. But then he did obviously the Hangover, Hangover Part, uh, sorry, Hangover 2, 3. But then, when you look at TV, he created and he wrote Chernobyl. Mythic Quest, which is absolutely amazing. The Last of Us. There's so many great things that this guy has done. You can see why Disney went, I'll have these two writers and I don't want Christina Hodgson. We'll, we'll see about her script in the future. And that's obviously why. But then it goes on that uh, regarding, obviously, Jack Sparrow. It's anyone's guess if it involves the return of Depp's Jack Sparrow. Hollywood has shut out Depp in recent years, obviously the legal troubles and his 2022 libel trial against his ex-wife. The producer expressed uncertainty over his return to the Pirates franchise when asked about it in 2022. Not at this point. The future is yet to be decided. Whatever the future holds to the Pirates franchise, Brock Eyman now says it'll be a reboot that sails into theatres first. Each of the five Pirates movies grossed more than $650 million worldwide, with Dead Man's Chest and On Stranger Tides both topping the $1 billion mark. Johnny Depp is Pirates. There's certain uh, films and franchises where if you try and either recast the role, if you try and get... You know, we're not going to have this person in there anymore because, you know, this doesn't really go well. It's, you're going to be thinking, actually, why are we getting rid of this person who is the franchise? You know, it's like with people of my generation, Batman is Michael Keaton. For people of my generation, Michael Keaton is the quintessential Batman. But then I absolutely enjoyed Val Kilmer. I enjoyed Christian Bale, I enjoyed Ben Affleck, George Clooney to a certain degree. And obviously at this moment in time we have Twilight Boy, who is, you know, Robert Pattinson is Batman and he's good. But, with that kind of role, with a superhero film, you can change the character in and out if you're doing a brand new series. With Pirates of the Caribbean, it worked because of Johnny Depp. Because of his mannerisms because of the way he was allowed to go off script and just be genuinely funny. But Disney are the ones who are like, oh no, we know what's best, which is absolute bollocks, because look at the franchises they've destroyed in the last 10 years. You know, they have destroyed so many franchises because they think, oh no, we're going to pander to this side or that side or this certain group of people or that certain group of people. They're not making it for the general audience. That is why they are losing money. They are making certain moves which is not exactly good moves because the people who actually watch these movies, they're not catering to them. Yes, they want to make as much money as possible, but the thing is, though, if they cater to the general audience, they're the ones who will go back and see a film a couple of times. They just will. Because if they like it, they will continue to see it. That's how it's done. But with the way that this headline does state, though, about you haven't got to wait for certain actors, and to be honest with you, with that, it wouldn't surprise me if we get word that Johnny Depp will more than likely pop up in the film. To be because Jerry Bruckheimer and Johnny Depp are really, really good friends. It was Johnny Depp and Tom Cruise who actually gave the Hollywood Walk of Fame the star for Jerry Bruckheimer. Jerry Bruckheimer, even before Johnny Depp, he had Eddie Murphy, Sean Connery, Nicolas Cage... All the biggest stars at the time. But he chose Johnny Depp and Tom Cruise because he knows those two people are the ones that gave him franchises because he knows they're the ones who make the money. 
That is it. And they've become good friends because you want to look after your friends. That's what it is. So, ladies and gents, if you are new to the channel, like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell for future updates. Leave us a comment. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you soon.